reference to... And, um, you know, during that time we couldn't really meet or anything. So I just, you know, I, I was trying to get the other guys involved in doing, you know, in, you know, utilizing this time to like, you know, do like home recording and stuff, you know, and just kind of like email, uh, ideas. And, uh, unfortunately that, that didn't really happen. So I just kind of decided to kind of do my own thing cool. and just get a bunch of, um, you know, friends to help me out. Um, you know, I, I was, my original idea was I was going to sing on some stuff, have some other singers and, you know, guitar players and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, basically I had, uh, this song that I wrote with, uh, with my buddy, uh, Albert. And, uh, we had, we had this song written like 10 years ago, but it was just a, like very, very basic demo. So I was like, you know, do you want to maybe we got this time, maybe we'll do like a real version of this. And that's what happened. And we released it and it did, did really well. Good. And uh, so, how about how about we do a second one, and then a third, and then a fourth? And we would just <laughs> we would just release these singles, you know, on uh, on streaming <laughs> services. Um, the idea was just to do one a month, one song a month, you know. Cool. And uh, just kind of turned into uh, into this, you know, like a real band now. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name. It wasn't really, you know, that wasn't the. Uh, <laughs> The original How did you idea. Come up with that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I got. You got to thank my parents for that. <laughs> so the idea, I was like, you know, what am I going to call it? I'll just call Monte Carlo and have a bunch of friends. But then it turned into a real band, and you know, people who don't know me are just going to think of the car anyway. So right. <laughs> so I kind of lucked out, you know. That's a nice car, anyway. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Do you have a, a special songwriting recipe that you follow when you're writing? Um, no, not really. I mean, uh, it, it always starts off because I, you know, I play guitar, like rhythm guitar on all these songs. Mm -hmm. So it, it always started off with like an idea. Like uh, sometimes I'll be driving to work and uh, I'll just hear like some riff in my, in my head. So I get my phone and just kind of like, you know, I, I'll hum it into my phone and save it. Yeah. And when I get home, I'll, you know, try to play what was in my head that I had recorded and everything. And, uh, you know, and then I just get it. Sometimes it's just like cruise control, you know, it's just like, it just kind of like writes itself. And then I go back and do the drums and bass and then I'll send it to, uh, uh, to Albert and he's like super quick with stuff. I mean, like the next day he'll have like a whole <laughs> song lined out and, uh, we go back and forth and, you know, and change little things here and there. And then, then we get other people involved, you know, to lay down the, the solos and clean things up and everything. But uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty simple, you know, just starts off with uh, with a riff, you know. Right on, right on. Any plans on uh, touring or do you do any live uh, live shows? What, what What's what's coming for us in 22? Um, well, yeah, the idea, like I said, or, you know, it was basically just like a project you know, and we didn't have, we didn't plan on doing any live shows at all, <laughs> you know, but, um, so we just kept on recording songs and, um, and eventually you just kind of turned into a, into like a real band. So we did do a couple, a couple shows in November, um, just to kind of, you know, get out there. And then we just did our third show, uh, just past Friday. So, uh, we do have, pretty much like from here on out we have like a couple gigs booked per month and uh you know trying to get you know onto bigger you know bigger slots is trying to uh 
trying to pick up like where I left off with with Mach 22, I guess. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. So do you have any pre-show rituals that you go through that, you know, you got to got to touch the the doorway or you got to drink, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, your a, a, a green Gatorade before you go on stage or is there anything spooky uh, or crazy <laughs> that you have to do before a show? No, nah, not really. Uh, I'm not really like, like superstitious like that. So I don't really like, uh, <laughs> like do stuff like that, but I, you know, I am like kind of paranoid about like, I always feel like I'm forgetting something, you know, like, you know, you know, like, uh, sticks. or, you know, like I, I had this fear of like, like forgetting one of my drums, like my bass drum. Like I can't play with that. <laughs> So uh, I mean, awesome. I, I check, <laughs> believe me, I'm, I'm like, I'm so paranoid with that stuff. I check everything like a half a dozen times, make sure like, yeah. you know, I, I have like this fear that, that it's just going to like vanish out of my car or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need to borrow your back line, but you have a bass drum. <laughs> just in case, right. Because it might just disappear, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just very, I'm very cautious with, uh, with making sure I have everything. Because that's like the right. worst thing, like getting to a gig and you know, forgetting something like, you know, forgetting the merch or, or, or whatever. Yeah. I had a, I had a couple of, uh, or one band, uh, the drummer left all his cymbals in my, my at my house. Um, on the, on the way to California, they were already in. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Every single one of his cymbals were here in Albuquerque. And I was like, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'm gonna be out there in a couple of days, man. So, but yeah, right. was, dude, <laughs> yeah i mean and that's that's a necessity that's something that you need you know yeah. it's just like uh you know yeah. usually you could you could do without you know you, you forget your snare drum usually the other band has yeah, yeah. but you know like symbols that's like a touchy thing I don't, you know yeah a lot of times drummers don't want to mm -hmm. let the other guy use you know, use that you know but it's like a personal yeah. thing you know yeah no it's a very personal thing yeah you learn that real quick too yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to jump in with a very quick question for you, Damien, mm -hmm. um, because I know you're a huge fan, but I want to know what your favorite Kiss song is. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, this is easy. <laughs> it's, it's probably, I, I'm okay. I'll, I'll ask you, I'll ask you a question first. What is, uh -oh. what, what's the, the, probably the worst Kiss song? <laughs> Cause I, cause that's probably my favorite one. It, it's like 90, 95% of the people always pick this song as the worst kiss song ever. And it, it's my favorite one. You, I'm not going to shun you for any song because I love kiss as well. Okay. My, my favorite song is world without heroes. Okay. Yeah, that's, most, yeah. that's what most would call their worst album. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All, okay. So, so you got that. So, so my, my favorite song is probably the worst song. It's, it's uh, let's put the X in sex. <laughs> And it's, it's like you know it's the worst song I, look i'm not telling you it's uh yeah if so if somebody says that song is awful i'm not gonna argue with you but <laughs> it's, it's just like it's just like a stupid fun fun song it's like it, it is it, fun it, yeah. you know it's uh i could picture like all the dance moves and and shit. yeah yeah <laughs> you know same thing so that's my favorite <laughs> kiss song i i would have never expected that man I, that's yeah. yeah totally dude <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, expecting something like I was made for loving you or something, you know, from the, the disco era. Yeah, yeah, is. something weird. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's it's that simple. Like, that's like, it takes me like not even a second to even mention that. That's I that's freaking love that's that great. song. That's why I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I dig that song. Yeah, that's right. A great, that's a great fucking answer. Yeah. <laughs> why? That was like, the, I think that was like the first Kiss record I, I got, I think was that one so like those two songs like i remember them doing an interview in uh in hip parader and paul was talking about those two songs you know you make me rock hard and let's put the x in sex and they had the yeah. lyrics in there and everything in the back of hip parader and uh i don't know i just always listened to that back then because it was my my only tape kiss tape that i had and yeah uh, I actually prefer those those versions of the songs too they're like all remixed like deuce and all that and uh mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of like 
the way they sound probably you know again it was like ingrained in my in my brain like those versions so that's like what i prefer how, how probably old were, i like that how old that, were you when you got when you got that uh probably like 12 i think yeah, yeah that's, pretty, that's 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 the age man right there yeah. dude. you get you get a copy of um you know something and, and it just it, it ingrains in you man it's like wow. right you you i know it's i mean a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of friends of mine, they kind of, you know, laugh at, you know, what they, their interest when they were, you know, at that age. But, but for yeah. me, th those were like, like my favorite movies, my, all my favorite music, band songs, everything mm -hmm. is all mm -hmm. from like, like that age, you know, when I was like nope. nine to like 14 or something, you know, yeah. I, I nope. still love that stuff. I don't, you know, I don't think it's funny. It's, uh, it's just, you know, it's a, it was a great period of my life and I still love yeah. that, you know? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. That's fucking, that's a, that's a great answer, dude. Good, good, yeah. uh, good question, John. That was a, yeah. that was a <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Charlie. You know, I have to bring Kiss up if I can. I mean, I <laughs> yeah. He's got to squeeze it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John and I, John and I have a, a, not really a feud over Kiss, but like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a love hate thing. You know, I I, I definitely get that. It's not. Uh, it's you know. not. It's not kiss. It's gene. It's gene. <laughs> it's gene. Yeah. It's gene, <laughs> What's Bro, for me? fucking bass players, man? <laughs> His name has cost us twenty million dollars. Good job. I know. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I I definitely get it. I mean, yeah, the, the, those guys, you know. Uh, their personalities it is what it is i don't really take yeah. them take them too seriously i think a no, lot of you it can't. is like an no, act yeah you you can't you know if you do then you don't get it exactly right? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> on top of your your old 12 year old influences who are is there people now that you listen to that you weren't listening to back then that influence your style of play now uh that's a good question uh i mean there were some bands that i didn't like back then that i actually really like now um i don't know about so much if they've influenced me but like i hated white line when i was a kid and uh, <laughs> vito brada is probably like my favorite guitar player oh yeah you know? and uh I'm a big, i am a big fan of that band i think they were different than everything else that came out like lyrically like they didn't really you know their songs weren't about party and and, and all the cliches and stuff they're more yep. like uh uh, kind of like like political in a way like you know they're, they're lyrics yeah. about things that are going on in the world and like real yeah real humanitarian you know. kind of yeah, yeah yeah you know For like sure. a little fighter and you mm -hmm. know when the children cry and stuff like that and you know yeah. uh, just like really good lyrics and you know musically i thought vito brada was like you know so underrated man amazing oh yeah yeah. I remember seeing a live show of White Lion on TV, and I, I had never really even paid attention to Vito Brada or anything like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy. Yeah. He is like freaking perfect. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was just in awe. I was like, he is really doing that. He, he reminds me so much of, I want to say, Eddie, just how uh, there is. I, he he does all the fills mm -hmm. and um there's not a whole lot of rhythm playing it's a whole bunch of uh yeah i, I don't even know how to describe it i mean uh extreme I know exactly what you mean. one that is that yeah. way um yeah. where if you were gonna lyrically follow that guitar you couldn't yeah <laughs> right it, it's almost like its own it's almost like another voice, like what he's doing with the guitar. It's Absolutely. almost like, like, uh, like a, a vocal melody line. It's like he play, he was, he's doing that on a guitar. It's not your typical rhythm guitar stuff, you know? Yep. Yep. It's like really interesting playing. Like it's like what Eddie took, he kind of took it to like the next level. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. like uh, Nuno is sort of like very similar style mm -hmm. like that too, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. For sure. I'm really disappointed. I not hearing from Vito or Vito just like just dropping out you know it's it, he had so much going on you know he's still yeah. sitting at home and just I know he just <laughs> he, got yeah, he just dropped it I mean it's yeah. it's uh you know but uh everything I've heard it's like you know he did it for the right reasons you know mm -hmm. it, it's his you know people say family comes first you know but he really meant it I mean I know he took yeah. care of his uh his parents you know all, yeah. all these years and uh at this point 
you know, I guess, uh, <laughs> why come back at this? Right. This time, you know? <laughs> I guess he kind of just wants to leave it, leave it as is. And yeah, you know, probably you know, like, uh, people come back after like, look at Jakey Lee. He didn't, he didn't do anything for years. He comes back and there was some naysayers and everything, but mm-hmm. Hey man, you know, it's like, I'm just happy to see him out there playing again. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Most definitely. So what new bands are you listening to? Is there anything out there on your radar? Uh, well, I, uh, some bands I discovered on the, um, the monster rock crews. Like there's one, uh, there's one, there's a newer band called Nestor. They're from, they're from Sweden. Oh, cool. And, uh, um, John's writing it down. I saw that, John. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, <laughs> got his notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you'll like them. They're t- they're a total eighties, you know, eighties throwback. Uh, they have uh, a lot of keyboards if, if you're into that. Uh, just real, real melodic, uh, you know, commercial sounding band. I don't even know like what they would. They're like Bon Jovi, I guess, old Bon Jovi in a way. You oh. know, like Slippery When Wet. Or um, yeah, them. I, I saw them on the cruise. They're amazing. They, mm-hmm, they, yeah. they, they blew me away. Uh, he. They're actually, you know, they've been around for a little while, but I saw them on the cruise and uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, it, it, I saw them on the 2020 cruise and I was listening to nothing but heat nonstop every day for like <laughs> for months straight. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Right on. If, if somebody was to look at your Spotify playlist, <laughs> what would you be embarrassed of? Uh, like, oh, oh, wait, 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 don't go into that one. <laughs> but you can't like make him call something out like that. <laughs> uh, gonna like, watch him be like, I, I mean, we've got air supply, I mean, on our, <laughs> yeah, you know, I like, um, we listen to like a lot of, uh, yacht rock and stuff during the summertime when it's yeah, uh, right you know right <laughs> we're just kind of like chilling out you know having a few drinks it's sunny out it's real nice so we put the yacht rock on the, the, you yeah. Know, yeah so that's <laughs> kind of, you know i never thought i listened to uh i don't know man some of those some of that stuff i'd be you know i would never tell anybody i listen to uh you know, michael mcdonald or i i can't even think of right penny <laughs> loggins or something you know right like like but you know at the end of the day a good song is a good song you know it's, you're, you're exactly yeah. right you're exactly that's right that's the thing I, I was just actually talking with somebody the other day about like guilty pleasures like music or something you know something like that and i'm like you know for me it's such a it's such a weird statement because if it's a pleasure of mine like i'm not, i don't feel fucking bad like it's a right. fucking cool like it's a cool song like fucking uh um, I was playing, uh, we were sharing the fucking Spotify at work the other day and fucking, I had Juice Newton. You guys are familiar <laughs> yeah. And that was, that was in one of mine and it fucking went on and they kind of looked at me and I'm like, fuck it. I like yeah. it, dude. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a lot, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that, you know, yeah. like, um, you know, a lot of like, uh, I, we went to Nashville a couple of years ago. So I kind of, that when I came home, it kind of took me down this old school country uh, mm-hmm. rabbit mm-hmm. hole, you know? So like yep. Johnny paycheck, that's like, he's like one obscure, like outlaw country guy. I got really, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's like stuff that I had never thought that I would ever like. And yeah. actually, uh, you know, when I, I don't listen to the radio that often, it's usually like I listen to the satellite radio, but when I do yeah. listen to terrestrial radio, there's like an R&B station in Philly that I listen to. And uh, it's like all eighties kind of like Bobby Brown, uh, new edition. Stuff. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's like dumb. Again, it's like fun. It's just music, yeah. you know, good, good is good, man. Yeah. Good is good, it, it really man. is. I mean, uh, just like, uh, we, we had, uh, a guest on last week. I was like, I freaking love blues now, man. Yeah. Right. Like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. never thought I would just get into it like I did with him. He was so phenomenal. But good music is just good music. I mean, it, it was it was really cool. It was right. really cool. Man, man, a lot of- I told I told you guys he was good and he sang blues. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. <laughs> Yeah, man. But like you said, a good song is a good song. I mean, right. Just, yeah. 
definitely dude so <laughs> yeah when i was younger i would never you know i'd always turn my head up to that that stuff yeah. that man I, you know I'm not this yeah you try to be arm, tough you know metal, <laughs> try to be, you know yeah. <laughs> try to be cool yeah like i'm not gonna right. listen to that now yeah Juice newton or something yeah <laughs> nickelback nickelback <laughs> yeah that i don't like <laughs> Oh, can't shoot. get into that stuff yeah yeah yeah. Oh. what elements of a song do you think makes it a hit um well you definitely need you definitely need that hooky chorus i mean that's the most important thing you know yeah um like a, a lot of our songs pretty much all of our songs are under four minutes mm -hmm. so you, you know you could get in and out in you know three and a half minutes you know it's uh we don't have long, you know, minute and a half long intros, you know, don't bore us, get right to the chorus. You know, that old saying. So you definitely need like something that people are going to be able to sing along to and, you know, and right. Pick and yeah. answer. Kind of like the X and sex. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I mean, as bad as it is, you know, you, it, it, you can't you're forget right. It, I, I you know? love the hooks and I can't, <laughs> I, I don't care what anybody says. They all, everybody freaking loves to sing along because they want to, they, they want to be that karaoke star. They want to do, they, everybody right. wants to do it, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. So, hey, I got a, I got a weird, like, kind of off the wall question, but it was talking, when you were talking about, uh, like, writing songs earlier, <clears throat> is there a song that was just like, and it's kind of a weird question, but like, is there a song that was like, Kind of a pain in the ass to write like it just didn't fall together very fast or like kind of very smooth but ended up being a really great song later um man i don't know it's um that's kind of weird but yeah i'm trying to think uh everything has really come pretty quick i mean there was a, there was a there was a few stuff there's some stuff that we had that we never even finished because yeah. it, you know it just kind of felt like it was you know it just wasn't coming along so we just kind of like push it aside but you know those, those things you always revisit okay you know mm -hmm. six months down a road or a year or whatever and maybe some something will spark a new idea but yeah usually if if nothing you know if something isn't clicking we just kind of move on to something else you know right. eventually it will because because if not then it's, it's just it, it kind of feels like forced you know like you're trying to yeah. force yeah. it and then, then it kind of doesn't feel right you know yeah yeah that uh, makes sense yeah oh sorry charlie no i was just that, that makes total sense yeah man kind of bouncing off of that how do you know when a song is finished yeah you know, is it three chorus or three verses or is it four verses um when is, yeah. when is the song done yeah we just go by the uh we always stick to like the simple formula you know two uh uh two verses solo you know first solo i mean verse chorus first chorus solo chorus maybe like some outro or something i mean right. there's no works you know yeah we're not trying to like do dream theater type stuff <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so i mean there's been times where you know we we thought something was finished and we go back and i was like yeah maybe i think it kind of you know i think it kind of needs something more and we would go back and maybe add something so um i guess it's a case by case basis but usually we know when we keep on listening to the song over and over and it's like we become fans of our own our own stuff you know which is Absolutely. that's usually when i know it's you know we got it i don't know yeah that makes sense all right so if if you could play in any other band you know a current band it doesn't matter what what band would it be and what would you play uh, well, it could be like a like a, a real band or yeah, like some fantasy situation. Well, no, I'd probably I mean, put, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably put myself in in uh, in Kiss. I'd fire Eric Singer and I'd probably jump in. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, throw me in. I'll jump in the DeLorean and I'll go back to like 1973, and you know, I'll wait for Peter Chris to you know to roll up and meet them, and I'll like you know, shove them in a, in a trash can or something <laughs> like i'm your drummer right that's how it would go down i'm your drummer now i'm, I'm the guy who talked on the phone makeup on <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm ready 
I'm, I'm the strong. guy you talk to. Perfect look. <laughs> <laughs> you got the gig. Exactly. That's badass. Yeah, that's funny, dude. <laughs> hey, do we have a we have a little sound clip to play? Maybe, Randy. I think, I think we do. Like we should at least get a little little song in, like you know, play a little bit of music, the little bit we can. I agree. We keep getting Well, that was actually that that was actually an old an older song that uh that was written maybe 10 years ago when i was always Holy going, hell. Eh, <laughs> you know uh it, it's you know it's not quite right so you know we revisited that and kind of changed some things and you know that's one of those things that was kind of like set aside and yeah, it came didn't back. Feel right yeah then we you know we kind of revisit that you know many years later and you know turn into what it is now cool 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 yeah. Sounds nice to me, man. Which will be, that's going to be, we have this uh, an actual like full length record coming out. I hope by the end of next month. So that will be on there. It'll be 10, uh, 10 tracks, I think. Uh, Thanks, nine, 10 tracks. <clears throat> so real, real quick before we, before we get out of here too, where, where can we find everything about you and, and everything that you've got, man? Uh, well, Facebook will probably lead you everywhere. So um, okay. Uh, just you would type up uh, Monte Carlo the band. Yeah. Uh, for some reason Facebook won't let me use Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I had to put the band on there. So, <sighs> but uh, yeah, well, we have links to uh, our Instagram. Our uh, we have a YouTube page. Uh, actually, I have a, I have a podcast with uh, with Bert the singer. Oh, and, nice. Uh, Mixtapes and tasty cakes. So we we put everything on right YouTube. On. And uh, all all the music, all, all the you know, all of our videos. It's all it all you know lives on that page so nice. Uh, nice. so we actually call it dan uh, dan Burt entertainment so but if you okay. type out monte carlo animal that's a video we have on there you'll see yeah the podcasts and all that stuff so sweet man cool cool, cool. Well, thank you damien uh Dude. it was great oh, thank to you. see you man yeah likewise right. and and appreciate it, man. Man. Yeah. yeah if you're anywhere in new mexico Kansas or Oklahoma, <laughs> let us know. Yes, up, we'll do, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Fucking thank you so much, man. And and, and you know, come back anytime. You, anytime you got something to, to push, or you just want to we'll shoot do, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, bro. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a you good too. one. You too. Thanks. <laughs> All right, man. That was, that was fucking. That's that, the way it's supposed to work. That that flew by so fast, man. That was so cool, dude. <laughs> it's really weird when it works the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, it is. It's like what what's going on? What's, what's, <laughs> what's, what's happening? It's working. Cool. Uh, but thanks to Damien for fucking hanging out with us for for the whole fucking thirty minutes, dude. I appreciate that. And it was a lot of good info. And I mean, like, you just talk to some people, man, and it's just like just fits right in the conversation man bam yep I, yeah. I looked down at the clock and i was like uh we should play a song yeah and i'm and i'm glad you did <laughs> <laughs> well what's going on man hey everyone how are you <laughs> good good so, <laughs> see i told you his hair i love it yeah, well, it, it means Zoom calls are very difficult because I have to figure out the right distance of the screen to fit all of it in. Well, as you can tell, we're all uh, follically challenged. So, <laughs> with that, with that great start, I want to start with my story, Randy. Uh -huh. uh, years ago, I believe it was your debut album, self-titled. Uh, I had, and a friend of mine. We'd always have after hours at the house. And they were like, hey, do you got any new CDs I should check out? And I'm like, oh, you got to check these guys out. They're from New York. 
and she opens it up and she starts looking at the pictures and she goes, of course, every band you tell me to listen to has better hair than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I do. <laughs> so, I never got that CD back, by the way. <laughs> I guess we can kind of introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Randy. Uh, I'm in Oklahoma City. I'm Charlie. I'm in New Mexico, Albuquerque, to be exact. I am John. I am in Topeka, Kansas. Cool. Well, I'm Chris. I'm in New York. Um, I live on Long Island, so that's why I mispronounce most of my words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, we had done an interview, uh, me and my wife, with you guys at Rocklahoma one time, and I remember you were calling, dude, we're running a little late, running a little late. And I was like, it's okay. It's all right. And you come running into the media tent, like frenzied. And I'm like, dude, we're on Rocklahoma time. Just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I remember correctly. Um, so that was our, one of our, it, it's 2013, right? I think so. So that was like the, so Rocklahoma, that Rocklahoma was like the first major anything we've ever played. Like, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like just it, the, the biggest thing we had done yet and um the idea of an actual coordinated press tent was so professional and exciting to us <laughs> but unfortunately the press times were like something like 15 minutes after we get off stage so right. it was like a like i think at one point i threw my guitar and i was like running <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it was like a lot of stress that day yeah, that was some crazy stuff. I, I noticed that too. They had the board of when everybody was going to be in the tent. And I was like, aren't they playing right now? You know, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I think we could have used a little more work on that, that little setup there, but, but it all worked out. It all worked out. Great. <laughs> so what do you have going on? Well, um, we released uh, our latest album in October, um, Perspective. <laughs> And a uh, very weird thing to release during a uh, worldwide pandemic, I will say. That is, uh, that's a new one. Let's never do that again. Um, but, uh, you know, it's been, it's been interesting because we can't, well, we haven't been able to tour on it. And right. that is something that, you know, pre-2020 Chris Lane really couldn't fathom the idea of releasing an album without going out on the road and, and, and playing it. And not just from the standpoint of playing the songs, but actually just from like the idea of like going out meeting people and selling the album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I mean, that was, I mean, not just us, obviously everyone but that was taken away from us. So um, yeah. it's been a very different experience releasing it. And it's, it's been a little tough because, you know, with the way everything works online, social media, everything lasts for like 10 seconds. So, you know, if you're on the road and like every night it's a start over, make the people listen to the songs, make, mm -hmm. hopefully make them fans, bring them to merch, you know, all that. Now it's kind of like, I wonder if this post gets people excited about that song. And it's just, it's so disconnected and not human that I hate it. I just, yeah. I miss being out and I miss, I don't know, I just miss being this far away from someone and talking about the music, you know? Right, yeah. right, right. And I've seen a lot of bands are releasing a whole bunch of singles instead of an album because yeah. the attention span is horrible. And, yeah. and you've got to keep people, you know, if you release 10, all here, here's 10, you know, and throw it in somebody's lap nowadays, you're probably, it, it's only going to last, like you said, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's kind of hard that, that you know, keeping, keeping people, interested and just like you said well here's another post i hope this this goes over you know that type of thing the biggest so in my opinion um and i don't know what the hell i'm talking about so take this with a grain of salt but like <laughs> the biggest problem is, is that both sides of the industry work diametrically opposite of each other mm -hmm. so on one hand a consumer, we'll say, someone who's going to buy the music, a fan, someone's going to listen to it. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter if the album is out. It only matters if they know about it. So it's one of those things where it's like, from that standpoint, I see no reason to release an album that's got 50 songs on it. Because honestly, if I'm going to promote a new song for the next 50 months, okay, it's new to that person hearing it. So, and there are 7 yeah. billion people to try to get in front of this song. So like, yeah. I'll take it. But from the <laughs> other standpoint, working with people to try to get the message out 
if it's more than three months old, it's old. And you get into this kind of weird point, but are you working with like a gatekeeper mentality where it's like, well, I've got to try to release things in a way so that the, the machine that, you know, is the music industry, whatever the different aspects of it can help me promote it. Right. Or, you know, in a band like us who we sell physical product and we're very lucky that fans, you know, have, have, have helped us with that. It's way more advantageous to release an album because we know that we're going to be able to sell it and move it, but we're shooting ourselves in the foot because now it's what month is it? March. That's yesterday's news. So it's, <laughs> it's a very weird world. And like, you know, again, taking away touring, touring was the one equalizer because mm -hmm. like I decide when we tour. So I could go out and be like, I'm going to talk to you about this album. And like, unless you leave the venue, you, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right on, right on. Oh, man. <laughs> well, that, so, that is so true. I mean, I, that's, I, I've never even thought of the, the two different sides. It's like yeah. being old news. You're right. Three months old is a baby to you guys but yeah on on the record side it's kind of like uh, yeah you know it's, it's just it's just the nature of how fast information travels nowadays you know i mean I, you know i mean i i kind of compare it to like people in the 50s and the 60s getting their evening news i mean everyone's got a phone right and everyone's completely up to date on on whenever the president sneezes so like you're yeah. like oh that's happened and that's it, you know? So like, you can't compete with that kind of information and just expect everybody to just act the same way they used to. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we could, could just go back in time. It's like, yeah. why, why does this have to be so hard? And it's, and it's just been made so easy that it, it makes everything hard. Does that even make sense? Well, it's just changed perspective on it because, you know, I like, so I grew up, at a time when there was the internet, but it wasn't like it was today, right? Like when I was in college, I had a flip phone. Yeah. Okay. So I had technology, but it, it's progressing so quickly now that like people are just so used to that, that I think that a lot of people have kind of forgotten what it's like to savor. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I have mixed feelings because, you know, on one hand, I'll, I'm totally guilty of loving my minute to minute updates of everything. Yeah. And, the, and you know, there's something magical about like just closing your eyes and just being engulfed in something for an hour and not needing constant pings and rings and bells and alerts and shit like that. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily yeah. bad. It's just different. Yeah, it's 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 such a double edged sword, you know, with the technology. I mean, you, you know, it's, there's so many good things. There's so many bad, you know, things that got, you know. But you take you got to take the good with the bad, and and just hopefully the good outweighs the bad, and, and hopefully, you know, we can we can work on that. But yeah. Hey, without it's, technology, there would be no second, third, or fourth station album. Nope. We right? Well, so, yeah. I mean, you know, I we're not signed. We're not signed to a record label. We do it independently. If this were 1980 something, the amount of money needed to record that oh, second yeah. album would have been yeah. insane, and that would never happen. So, I mean, yeah. on that side, we're very blessed. You know. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. We're 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 able to do what we're doing right now as well. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. and, and for everybody out there to go find your stuff it's at stationband.com correct mm -hmm. that's our website and all our socials are station nyc nice okay Not i was the on there today yeah. trying to remember which album that i had before to tell the story <laughs> the right way and i was like i gotta remember that now <laughs> yeah, so I, I have another question for you though yeah. if, if you don't mind uh I know you guys have played multiple different festivals in the past. Like I, I, Randy and I both for sure saw you at Rocklahoma one year. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw you at Rock and Skulls pre-party one year in Pekin, mm -hmm. Illinois, at the Twisted Spoke Saloon. Is that the one where the power went out? M maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we so that venue we go back to that venue a lot um and i love the twisted spoke but um that show in particular when the power went out so you know it's like an electric band the power stopped we kept playing people sang the song and when the power came back on we picked up right when the song was still going and it was like the most Dude, that's awesome. ever. Wow. 
So is there like a like a favorite venue or place that you guys have played that you would love to go back as often as you could type place? Um, you know, do, yes. And, and I think it would probably be a different answer for each band member for different reasons. Um, right. My, I would have to say the, my favorite place that we've ever played was we played at um, Music Fest in, I think it's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And the stage we played on, it's like a festival. And the stage we played on has the backdrop of this like decommissioned steel mill. And it is like, it is the most surreal, insane looking stage venue I've ever been to. Um, it's just so beautiful. And it looks like kind of weirdly like futuristic and dystopian and like this kind of like, you know, steampunk way. Nice. It's just cool. And it's just, it's huge. I mean, it's stories high. So I would say that's probably one of my favorite places that we've ever played. Very cool, man. <laughs> Randy, so, you were about to say something. Oh, yes, I was. Well, I, you could just read me. Right? <laughs> so that being said, doing the festivals and then um, also playing the clubs, what do you like more, the intimacy of the clubs or the festivals where you get to reach hundreds and potentially thousands of people um so i'm gonna i'm gonna choose option c i like <laughs> i like playing theaters the most mm -hmm. when okay. i can meet people afterwards the problem the problem with clubs is, and this is like club is a word that doesn't apply to any one venue because every place is different right the problem with smaller venues sometimes for us is, is that we like to move around and mm -hmm. we like, you know, we like to put on, like put on a show. You know what I mean? Like you're into the music. We walk around, we play with each other. We do, you know, we just stuff. Right. Sometimes that's hard when it's a very small stage. Yeah. At festivals, it's almost the opposite problem where it's like a lot of people are watching you, which is great. But at the same time, unless they know you and they can sing all the songs, people are kind of half tuned in because that's just the atmosphere. Uh -huh. Like a theater or something, when we've opened up for other people, it's great because, you know, we've got an audience who's like sitting there watching the show. They're not doing anything else. And then it's a small enough kind of thing where afterwards we can meet them at the merch table. We can go out and, and, and say hi to people and we can have that human interaction that we still like. You know, a lot, of pro a lot of the time at like festivals and stuff, the second you're done playing, people have to run to the other thing they're going to see. Mm -hmm. So you kind of lose out on, unless someone's like really dying to meet you, you lose out on that kind of like casual, oh, I want to meet the band afterwards and say hi or yeah. you know, whatever. That's, that's awesome. I never even thought about that. I like in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's just different. And every, every place is different. And, you know, one of the biggest things that I've always kind of found really influences the show is how the venue treats you. And we have been insanely lucky that we've worked with a lot of really cool people who have just done right and, and really been helpful to us, you know? Right, right. Never piss off a sound guy, ever. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your plans for the rest of 2022? Two. Two. I, I, I fixed it. <laughs> 2022. <laughs> well... Assuming nothing else changes those plans, which I mean is like now month to month. Yeah. Um, I know we're expecting a new strain soon. Well, <laughs> you know, so we were going to tour in April and we were going to do like, so the biggest problem for the band touring wise is that you can't book a, a, a real tour and cancel in the middle of it and still be financially okay. Right. So like, it's almost like, it, it's almost like fear that stops a lot of bands from touring because you're just like, I just can't afford to have this taken away from me if God forbid someone gets sick or, you know, that's the new thing. But like the thing before that wasn't the sickness, it was sickness combined with local laws changing if you could perform, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that was 2020. Then there was 2021 with sick. Now it's kind of like, well, you know, like in New York, it feels like the mask mandate has been lifted. You know, people are out and about with that. Mm -hmm. it, it feels very normal. And if that stays the same, I think that that's a good sign. Yeah. In December, things felt really normal in the first part of the month and then descended into hell really quickly. 
Yeah. And we were planning on touring in April, doing like four day weekend kind of things to try to mitigate a long tour of not getting sick. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's good you know, idea. and we would, we would have to do it in a way where it's like, we can only go probably as East as like Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can go up to Maine, we can go South to Georgia and like, we make like a triangle. I don't know, early January, we canceled all our plans because there was just no sign that that was going to actually be feasible. Right. Come mid February, things are fine again. And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're talking about trying to do like a real good old-fashioned tour probably at the end of the summer early fall um okay. cool yeah you know i mean it's enough time to definitely see what happens um the real question is, is whether or not we'll we have a new album that's almost done do we want to release more music before we tour or not and that's a real head scratcher because there's a lot of factors that go into that so We'll see, yeah. but I, I can see Station getting back on stage for real by the end of the year, for sure. That's good. That's good news. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but it, I mean, it's, yeah, it's such an unfortunate, weird, strange time that we're in right now. It's just, everything is like, like you said a minute ago, it's like almost month to month. And now sometimes week to week, it's like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so It's unfortunate. When, when other bands are touring, you got to, you know, one of the things that we have to constantly deal with is that you know we're not a band that's playing in venues that have all that space sometimes so you know i saw a lot of bands touring and they've got like people taking photos with them with like the plexiglass and stuff yeah. <laughs> i mean regardless of how you feel about that there is no way we can bring plexiglass and no. then there's the other conversation about having you know our merch sellers how do you feel about sending your merch seller into a crowd of people when they might not feel safe for whatever reason and it's just like that's another consideration now that I never thought I'd have to deal with, you know? So yeah. it's just a lot of new problems that you just, I don't know. It is. It's like been a whole bunch of hurdles. Yes. You know? it, it really has. And I never even thought of that. It's kind of like in our minds, it's kind of like, okay, everything's lifted. Why, why aren't the bands out there? You're absolutely right. It, it's kind of like, uh, you can't stop in the middle. You can't, it, it, it'll financially devastate you if you take off work and put all this money into this and then uh, a new mandate comes down and shuts everything down. You're absolutely right. And, and I wasn't even seeing it on that side. I'm just yeah. like, let the bands come. <laughs> you know, we're free. I, you know, I, I love, I love playing shows. I love traveling to play shows. I don't love the actual travel itself. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I can, I can, I can tell you which my favorite rest stops are on every turnpike. And I can tell you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I, we've done it so many times. The biggest fear is always like, you know, if God forbid someone did get sick or you had to cancel your tour short, you know, we're all based in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. What happens if that happens in Chicago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, and then you're dealing with the cost of gas right now, which is insane. And <laughs> Crazy. I, that cuts into profit right there. So like, you, you know, there are all these variables that like, you just like, sometimes I'm not going to lie. I wake up in the morning and cause you know, we do all this ourselves and I just kind of be like, I just want to play the guitar. But, right? Like, right? Like, yeah. Why does this have to be so Dude. hard? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, what and this is just a current event question. Where you're at right now, what is what is the average of gas right now? So it's above 450. Um, I filled up my car, I filled up my car the other day, it was like 65 bucks. Um, Damn. it's a lot, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 oh, it's four like four seventeen here or something like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's and don't forget, we have a bus, and the bus is not known for gas mileage. So no, they're not. <laughs> no. No, they're not. <laughs> we were actually we were joking about it. We were like we were talking about um, just like what would have happened if we were planning to still go out in early April with the gas prices and how that would have eaten everything. And I just I was just joking. I was like, we'd have to do it acoustic because the instruments are too heavy to weigh the bus down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on hey i think we got a song maybe queued up that maybe we could uh listen to before we part ways maybe listening to <laughs> ashton <laughs> okay. there we go
That's good uh-huh. stuff. See, yeah, that's yeah. fun. That's fun. <laughs> All our music, our music is happy music. I mean, we're not party crazy people. So like our music is just happy about the two most important things, love and not love. So, I mean, like, yeah. it, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You guys just have such a clean melodic sound, though it's it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we're very Absolutely. lucky to have found each other because we're very in sync with what we like to sound like. There is no, uh, there's no internal struggle about the way it should come out of us. And I think it's because of the way our hair naturally grew out, and it's just like we kind of like. <laughs> you know, That's I how we them, found each other too. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time and they're always like, well, you know, with the style of music you play, you grew your hair like that. I'm like, oh no, it's the other way around. Yeah. Like, right. This is the way it came out. And I think that that led me there because I was like, yeah, this is where I belong. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, you know, we all like it and we all kind of like, we do what we need to do to serve the song and we trust each other in what the other brings you know um we've always had a working relationship where we kind of view the songs as a representation of all of us so if like pat like our singer pat has an issue with something that i'm playing on the guitar he should tell me and we'll talk about it because my guitar playing represents him as much as his singing represents me and Mm -hmm. we've really never had an ego problem with that we're very peanut gallery we're very you know like everyone just talks to each other you know that's good. That's well. That no, yeah. You, that's that's good to hear for a band, especially. You know, sometimes you have uh, egos clashing, or you know, just yeah, different different opinions on different styles. But yeah, that's I just agree that you guys can just uh, you guys mesh together that well. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just actually that's been the hardest thing about the pandemic is not even playing with my musicians. It's not seeing my friends. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean that that's been a real problem. Yeah. <laughs> right on. All right. Well, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. Um, for having me. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. And if and if you have anything going on, new releases, just just hit us up, man. Just go. Yeah. Hey, can I can I get like ten minutes on the show? On, we're, we're on every Wednesday, and we can slide you in. That sounds great. Thank you. Seriously, yeah. man. We, but, yeah, uh, we really appreciate you coming on. And you know, if you you get that tour coming up at the end of, at the end of the summer, come back on, and we'll we'll promote the shit out of it for yeah. you. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I will see you soon. No All right, have a good one, everybody. That is Chris from Station. You can find their stuff at stationband.com. Ooh. Go buy their new album, Perspective. They need to get on the road. Yeah, man. Yeah, because uh, that. Uh, dude that's crazy like I, I know that stuck out to me when you said you know they released a, an album and then you know as bands do they release an album and then they tour on that album mm-hmm. and then they didn't get a tour that's that's fucking crazy man like i can't like i can't imagine that that fucking sucks yeah there's yeah i've learned a lot tonight i really yeah. have like I've never really thought of it on the other side because basically it's because we're being selfish for ourselves. We want to see you know, live music. Yeah. Like ultimately that's what it is. Like we're it like, is. I need live music, but the bands are like, I ain't getting well, out we, there. What the hell? Yeah. Like we wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, I, like I totally get the way he said it though, because I was like, Yep. I never, it never even hit my brain that yeah. that was an issue for them in that aspect. Yeah. Just like, why can't I just see live music? That's what I yeah. want. Yeah, I everything's like, open. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> we're going live. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. we're going live. Why can't they? I know. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's how we're supposed to do it, right? Absolutely. That's that's how it should have happened. Yep, that's 100% <laughs> how it's supposed to work out, guys. Uh, both of our guests showed up. It was like boom, boom timing. We were there. We had a mm. nice little gap in the middle just for a little segue between. Well, and uh, let's, let's give uh, everybody a little insight to who's on next week. Well, hold on, man. Shout out to fucking Hit Parader Magazine, bro. Fucking. <laughs> oh, Dude, when he- I'm glad you said that. I got other things to mention. When he brought that up, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, it's like fucking Hit Parader Circus. Hit Parader. (laughs) Dude, shout out to the the fucking 80s fucking metal magazines, dude. 
Yeah. Metal Edge. Metal Edge. <laughs> All right. Metal Edge what? also has a online store again. Oh, you sure. to their Facebook, where I, th I think it's probably metaledge.com. Mm -hmm. They're not printing physical copies of Metal Edge, but they are doing a online a zine, I guess. Okay. A zine. Yeah. I don't know the right word for that. You're making up words again, John. <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be a hit word. <laughs> uh, yeah, something else that I something else I wanted to bring up tonight and uh, during the show. Um, I want to applaud Dolly Parton. Oh yeah. For, yeah. For oh yeah. Out, for bowing out off of the ballot from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I she mean, said she didn't feel worthy. No. I'm like, of all the crap that they throw out there, I think yeah. Dolly's probably worthy. Yeah, she, yeah, and Dolly, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know what? Just because she did that, put her fucking in, man. <laughs> but I'm but also you, like, I want to see more artists follow suit. Uh, I, you know, more should because I would feel weird. Like if I was a if I was a rock and roll musician and I got fucking inducted into the country music hall of fame i'd be like mm -hmm. what Why? this is weird i'm not i'm not country music i you it's know like, there's pop stars there's r&b yeah. i mean it's right don't i'm, I'm fine if they, i'm fine if they want to put those people in there but just call it the music hall of fame yes yeah. i've yep. been saying that for years yep. stop calling it the rock and roll. stop calling it rock and roll because <laughs> it's not all rock and roll most just call it what it is yeah and who voted on that? They, I mean, they, they know she's not. There's like, there's like five people, and they're no, like, we should, we should put this person in. I, I actually, there's like some sort of a panel of yeah. them, uh, like a uh, people who don't fucking know the difference. But they just they're, they're 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 the type of people who don't even listen to music. And there are people like that. There's fucking weirdos in the world like that. I think that's the problem. It's just like, just like I'm, this is one of those topics I never bring up. It's just like politicians at this point, they're all 80 and they're still running the country. Mm -hmm. I ain't letting my mom try to run the country. No. <laughs> no. Like, no. Retire. No. Get no. out. Exactly. You have a flip phone. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, she, uh, oh, bro, she yes. does have a flip phone. But Dolly Parton did write something. <laughs> that, right? Sorry. But didn't Dolly Parton. <laughs> She was going to. Um, she was. She was actually thinking about making a rock and roll album. That's cool. That would yeah. Be awesome. And there's a. I just saw. I saw a thing today that there's a, a, a producer that was already like, uh, I volunteer to produce your rock and roll album for you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. there you go. It's gonna happen. Do it. Yeah, because she's like eighty something. You know, fucking. Why not? And I like. I don't want her running the country either. No. <laughs> like no, she can I, still make music, but don't yeah. run the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if, if fucking uh, Joe Biden was fucking making fucking uh, country music, I might listen to it. <laughs> you couldn't yeah, yeah, you couldn't understand it. It wouldn't make any sense. Wouldn't make wouldn't make a fucking sense at all. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Uh, I feel like we went way too far off topic, but we yeah. had to. <laughs> Uh, who do we have next week? I don't know. Oh, oh I thought you knew. I well, I do. I, oh I wait, know. oh, were you? I do were know. You doing like a little throw to us, and we, you know, throw it back to you, kind of thing. Yeah. No, 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 actually, I can't no, I actually, I, I forgot, but I do know. Uh, we have the Ratchet Dolls next week because they're here next Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I don't know if we have somebody else with them yet. Fortune Child. That's right. There we go. We rescheduled Fortune Child. That's right. Thank you to our guy in the chair because I I wouldn't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I did um, totally space that one off, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to see him on Tuesday, and then we have him on the show on Wednesday." Oh yeah. <laughs> They're on a travel day, so. <laughs> well, that's cool. cool that we got that coming up, and then we have. Uh, uh, a guest that we promised in the past that will be with us the very beginning of April because they're going to be doing their fucking Fozzie Saves World fucking tour uh, Crash Karma we're going to have them April 6th so that'll be fine they'll be on a 
they'll be like just beginning their tour. I think they'll have like four four shows in or something, maybe three or four shows in, and then we'll have them on, and then we can we can see what that's all about. Uh, so if we don't have anybody else for April sixth, I will. I take that back. We'll figure it. We'll talk about it. We, we <laughs> already, no, no, no. We should already have uh, Sam from Midnight Devils, I think. Okay. okay. Is that correct? I don't know. All right. We'll figure that out offline. <laughs> yeah, All right. When, when the world ain't watching us. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, Fortune Child and who else next week? Ratchet Dolls. Ratchet Dolls. Fortune Child and Ratchet Dolls next week. I got nothing else. What about you guys? No, no, I'm I'm good. Play us out. Thanks. Play us out. <laughs> <laughs>